Hey guys, Jay here with Word of Advice TV, and I believe that every technician, every good technician, should know what Ohm's Law is and how to use it. Now, if you're watching this video and Ohm's Law sounds like a foreign language to you, you're in the right place. Stay tuned. But if you're a veteran technician and Ohm's Law is your second language, then that's okay. Consider this as a refresher. And at the end of the video, if you have any corrections to say about what you saw in this video, please let us know in the comments below. And because I like to keep things simple, I will try to keep this explanation as simple and basic as possible. So let's begin. Ohm's Law, what is it? It's basically this little formula right here. This Ohm part, all that means is the guy who came up with this concept, Ohm's Law, his last name was Ohm, so now it's named after him. And I don't know if this is just a science or a physics thing, but it seems like that happens a lot. The guy who came up with volts, his last name was Volta. The guy who came up with amperes or amps, his last name was Ampere. And watts are not on here, but can you take a wild guess what the last name is of the guy who came up with watts? I know it's hard to believe, but his last name is Watt. But anyway, back to the formula. There's actually quite a few different ways to draw this. In fact, this is the simplified version. There's a bigger chart of this, and I'll include a picture of that as well. But these two right here are the most common ones. So this right here is the Ohm's Law Pi, and this one is the Ohm's Law Triangle. They're both the same exact thing. When this concept or drawing was first drawn, V is what it started out with for voltage. And somewhere along the line, they decided to change it to electromagnetic force, which is the same thing as voltage, so they switched it to an E. But they're basically the same exact thing. I guess the people that made these drawings are very considerate, so if you absolutely hate circles, you can use a triangle. They're both the same. So V or E stands for voltage. I, which means intensity, stands for current, which is usually measured in amps or amperes and R stands for resistance, which is usually measured with ohms, which is this omega symbol right here, that stands for ohms. The purpose of Ohm's law, that formula right there, is very simple. If a person has two out of the three of the values, they will always be able to figure out the third one. So if you have the volts and the resistance, but you don't have the amps of a component or a circuit, you can figure that out using this formula right here. And before I go into examples of how I would use this formula, just really briefly, I want to go over what voltage, current, and resistance actually is, just in simple terms. So voltage is what makes electricity move. It's basically the driving force, the stuff that pushes electricity through. Some people refer to it as pressure or tension. So voltage is basically what makes the electricity or electrons move. And the scientific explanation of this is pretty long. And if I go into that, this video will no longer be simple. But luckily, that's not needed for this formula at all, the explanation or the science behind it. So we're not even going to go there. And next up is current. Current is how much electricity is flowing through a given point. So basically the volume or how much electricity is flowing through. And resistance is something that resists the flow of electricity. And one example of that is a piece of wire, just to make resistance a little bit more clear. A piece of wire is made out of two things. One is the insulation around the wire, and the inside of the wire is typically made out of copper. Metals have a very low resistance to electricity, so they're perfect to use as conductors to conduct electricity, whereas plastic or rubber has a very high resistance to electricity, so it's perfect to use as insulation so none of the electrons get out. And this right here is an insulated connector, which is made out of plastic, once again for the same reason, because it has very high resistance to electricity. And another form of resistance is electrical loads such as a motor, a light bulb, or like a heating element. And I realize that this probably is starting to sound a little bit confusing, which is why most people, when they're trying to explain this concept, bring up the water analogy. So I'm going to go ahead and touch on that as well, because electricity and water, the way both of them work, is pretty similar. So that helps better understand all of this. So if you think about water, 
You know how we have um, electrical outlets all over the house? You plug something in and it gets turned on. Same with water. You have water faucets all over the house. You turn the valve on and water comes out. So there's two things needed to make that work. One is the water itself and two is water pressure or pressure to push the water through the pipes and out the water faucet. Same with electricity. It's at the outlet and you need voltage right here. Voltage is the pressure that pushes electricity through. So water pressure and voltage is essentially the same thing. As for current, current is how much electricity is flowing through. So in the example of water, that would be the volume of water or how much water is flowing through the pipes. Now, the bigger diameter the water pipe is, the more water can flow through. And same with current. The thicker the gauge of wire is, so the thicker this wire is, um, the thicker the copper part is, the more electricity or current, more amperage can go through that piece of wire. As for resistance, I think a good example of that is the shower valve in your shower. So the water pressure is pretty high going up to the shower valve and then that pressure drops as it's forced through that restriction and the pressure drops and there's a lot of little streams that come out. And if you apply that to electrical currents, an electrical load, for example, a motor would be like that shower valve. So there's power going into the motor and that causes the motor to start running. And as with water pipes, if you apply too much pressure to a water pipe, it will burst. Same with current. If you apply too much electrical current to a wire, so if the wire is not rated for that amount of amps or current to go through it, that wire will melt or burn. So hopefully that water analogy helps paint a better picture of what voltage, current, and resistance actually is. And now let's go back to our little formula right here and how to actually use it. So like I was saying earlier, if you have any of the two values from that little formula, you can always figure out the third. So for example, if you have the voltage and the resistance of a motor, then you can figure out the amperage by using this formula. Or if you have the voltage and the amperage, but you don't have the resistance, you can use this formula to figure it out. If you don't have the voltage, you can cover up the V. All you would have to do is do I times R to get you your voltage. So amps times resistance would get the voltage. Now, if you don't have the resistance, you can cover up the resistance. And since they're on top of each other like that, that's division. So volts divided by amperage would get you the resistance. Now, if you're looking for the amps, you can cover that up. And as you can see, volts divided by resistance would get you your amperage. So let's do a couple examples of that. So let's draw an Ohm's law pi right over here. Do our little sections. And let's say we have a single speed blower motor that is rated at six amps. So we can put the six where the I is. And we know that the voltage for it is 115 volts. But we don't know what the resistance is. So by using this formula, it would be R resistance equals 115 divided by six, which would equal 19.17 ohms. Do a little ohm symbol right there. So that would be R, 19.17 ohms. So let's do just one more example. Let's say we're looking at a contactor coil in an air conditioner. So let's draw us another little ohm pi. Ohm's law pi, I should say. Split up our sections. So let's say instead of resistance, what we're missing is the amperage. So we can put I right here, intensity, current, or amps, same thing. I right here. And let's say the resistance of our contactor is about 18 ohms. That's pretty normal for a good contactor coil. And the voltage for it coming from the transformer, let's say that is 24 volts. 
So in order to figure out our amperage, we would need to divide 24 by 18, or basically divide the voltage by the resistance. So I, or amps, equals 24 divided by 18. Oh, this marker is not even on all sides, so it's looking kind of goofy. Okay, 24 divided by 18, which equals 1.33 amps. So amps is 1.33 amps right there. So that is how you use the Ohm's Law formula to figure out your missing value. And usually, you never really have to figure out the voltage. That one's pretty obvious. But just to show an example of that one as well, let's draw us one more pi. Let's say what we're missing this time is the voltage. Our resistance is gonna be 25, and our amperage will be 4.6. So to figure out the voltage, we would need to do amps times resistance. So in our case, it would be V equals 4.6 times 25, which would come out to 115 volts. And just for the sake of simplicity, let's just write these little formulas out. So voltage equals I times R, our resistance would be V divided by I, and our amperage would be V divided by R, or voltage divided by resistance. So that is the Ohm's Law formula and examples of how to use it. And one thing I did not cover yet is watts. So let's go ahead and add watts to the list here, and that will be the last thing we talk about. So a watt is a measurement of the rate of energy transfer. Now, that kind of sounds like a mouthful. So in simple terms, if we go back to our water analogy, a watt would be like the speed of the water going through the pipe, how fast it's going through. So basically a rate of transfer, how fast that electricity is going through. And there is another formula for figuring out the watts, and it's pretty simple. I'm gonna go ahead and write that one down as well. So it's P, power, which is the same thing as watts. P equals V times I. So voltage times amps will give you your wattage. So for example, let's just use W for watts equals Let's say that our voltage is 120 volts times 7 amps. That would equal to 840 watts. So that is the formula used to figure out watts. And just a fun fact, with watts, let's get this eraser out of the way, one horsepower this is not related to any of this, but just a fun fact. One horsepower equals 746 watts. So that's kind of cool to know. And while we're on fun facts, let's go back to current for a second. So the way we measure current in the technical field is by using an amp clamp. So the amp clamp is basically measuring the amount of current or the amount of electrons flowing through any point on the wire in one second. So my question to you is, how much electrons, electrons are really microscopic little things, how much electrons are flowing through that one point in the wire in one second? The answer is 6.24 times 10 to the 18th power. Now, that might not seem very impressive, so let's actually write this out so you can actually understand how much electrons we're talking about here. There you go, now that looks more impressive. So basically, that many electrons flow by your meter in one second. That would equal to one amp. Well guys, and as you can see, I ran out of room on the whiteboard, 
which is okay because that is all I wanted to share today. Hopefully you got some good information out of this, this has been helpful for you, or at the very least, you got some fun facts out of it. Don't forget to visit the comment section and mash the like button on the way out. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you next time. And if you are still here and not in the comment section below, did you know that the little white M that is on M&Ms is actually made out of edible paper? Don't believe me? I'll prove it to you. Watch this.